distinguished chair, distinguished colleagues. So this slide shows the key directions of immunotherapy. What I would like to focus on is cellular immunotherapy. It's Anatoly Boreshnikov was the founding father of this therapy, and he he is responsible for a significant contribution and progress in this area, in the law, including the law on cellular technologies. And the uh, finally, this law was adopted uh, on the 15th of June, which opens new horizons for immunocellular therapy and also uh, is also a challenge because now the immunocellular uh, medications are are on the same footage as general medications. Immunocellular therapy is about activation of uh, immune system and ejecting of uh, cells into the patient's body. Those are lymphocytes activated by interleukin-2 or cytokine cocktail, the so-called genetically modified cells, as well as TIL lymphocytes. The adaptive immunotherapy started from the discovery of interleukin-2 and in Russia, it has been substituted by the domestically produced medication Ronco-Leukin. The uh, LAK cells have a very specific uh, cytotoxic morphology. Those have are large in size, have cytoplasm and demonstrate uncontrolled proliferation, we see that the lymphocytes surround the uh, tumor cells and create an effective ratio of tumor cells to uh, lymphocyte cells. Activated lymphocytes include natural killers that actually are responsible for the efficiency of innate immunity. Those include activated forms that pre present activating molecules on their membranes. We have talked a lot on immunosuppressor populations. Until now, we have not identified true suppressors. However, the CD25 Fox, uh, FOX3 interleukin cells, which used to be a buzzword, is not, does not increase the population of activated T lymphocytes and does not diminish its cytotoxic properties. However, today, We look at other mechanisms for suppress to suppress activated lymphocytes. In particular, T lymphocytes together with interleukin-2, CD152 receptors increase in number not only on T lymphocytes but also on natural killers. Today, the role of these receptors in activation or suppression of natural killers is poorly known, but it is possible that it is these mechanisms that are the two inhibitors in lymphocyte activation. This is a natural fact. As it has been mentioned today, there is a checks and balances system, and therefore activation would inevitably trigger inhibitory mechanisms, one of them being the expression of this receptor. 
whatever the case, it is well known in research that Fox C CD25 Fox P3 lymphocytes that express CTLA4 are able to exercise suppression on natural killers. Here we can see the efficiency of intracavitary therapy in uh, tumorous serositis. And this slide evidences that tail population may include both natural killers and T regulatory cells as well. Interestingly, activated innate immunity effector therapy may include treatment of residual tumors. This slide shows the results after radical surgeries in so what we see that the lymph and the blood demonstrates tumor cells in the patient with renal cancer. This slide evidences that in central lymph we have both individual tumor cells and conglomerates. With all that in mind, lymphocytes in central lymph get in contact with billions of lymphocytes. So tumor cells get in contact with billions of lymphocytes in lymph. And these cells are able to evade from immunosurveillance. It is only activated lymphocytes activated by interleukin-2. They surround tumor cells and rupture them. And here we see that after such interaction with activated lymphocytes, there are no tumor cells left in lymph. The same thing stands for patients with radical after radical surgery for breast cancer. There is a durable prolonged lymphorrhea. Ten days after surgery, we are presented with tumor cells, which means that the surgery was not actually radical and to be follow up, followed up by chemotherapy and immunotherapy. Therefore, the adaptive immunotherapy has specific indications. One of them is an efficient ratio between activated cell and activated lymphocytes, which is can be enabled by ex vivo injection of activated lymphocytes or adjuvant therapy after radical surgery. Innate immunity factors can recognize tumor cells without antigens or MHC. Quite the contrary, the presence of MHC is a signal for lysis. However, despite the efficiency, those are those have limited potential because the interaction is local without, without proper effect. So the next stage was to come up with a dendritic cell vaccine so as to stimulate adaptive immunity and to produce the immune clone. However, the clinical research showed that this strategy was poorly efficient. So where do you have dendritic cells? And the result performed by Rosenberg in 440 patients showed that without the 
natural surrogate criteria, the efficiency is does not go over 3%. And the same stands for more extensive groups of patients with efficiency of approximately 4%. We have talked a lot about suppressor mechanisms related to inefficiency of dendritic cell vaccines. So this is indeed a very important dimension, but may I say a very, may I carefully say a very daring thought that the most important thing is absence of tumor-specific antigen and low expression thanks to MHC. These are the two components that are necessary to fully implement the adaptive immunity response. This is proved by the fact that dendritic cell vaccines usually trigger an immune response to the target antigen and all the immunity markers evidence that this system is efficient indeed. But we had some doubts about this approach and therefore as an antigen we used bacteria, Klebsiella, one of them, with the lysate, Klebsiella lysata, we loaded dendritic cells with Klebsiella lysata and looked at them in various regimes and what we had was a very good protective effect which means that the system is working but provided there is an antigen. Keeping in mind that suppressor mechanisms do not play a crucial role in anti-tumor effect, therefore we speak about transplants. And we had such a case when a patient had a tumor of transplanted uh, kidney with multiple metastases. This patient was treated with suppressor therapy and but as soon as the suppressor therapy was abolished after the tumor was removed, all the multiple metastasis that generated a relapse and this is something that we also have in our publications when patients are exposed to iatrogenic immunosuppressive therapy after transplantation usually are challenged with metastasis regression. So therefore, there is no problem with recognition. Although when doing transplantation, doctors are very careful about choosing the proper transplant. However, there is an immunity response. This slide shows the classic picture of how immune response is activated and suppressed. Today, we, as we know well, there are checkpoint inhibitors that are able to that are able to trigger an effect on inhibitory receptors. A combination of activatory activating and Inhibitory res receptors is practical. There is some data already that such a combination can augment the cellular therapy. Therefore, as a perspective as a, of adoptive therapy is the activation of lymphocytes by means of activating receptors and locate immune checkpoint blockade to generate uh, overactive clones and immune receptors. Thank you for your attention. So we have two options, either to ask questions now or to ask questions or first go to for lunch and then ask questions. Do we have questions? 
Thank you very much for a highly exciting report. A very short question just for me. Could you please summarize it? On the one hand, you see you show low efficiency of dendritic cell vaccines. On the other hand, you said that those are efficient, those work, but what we need is proper organization, proper structure of therapies, injection of uh, extra ligands or checkpoints. What's your main idea? Well, yes, indeed, dendritic cell vaccines need extra optimization, which means activation of both adaptive immunity and innate immunity. These two mechanisms are opposite ones. Natural killers influence cells that do not have MHC receptors, whereas adaptive immunity factors and immunity clones require antigen and MHC. And this interaction allows us to, to manipulate various tumor subpopulations that are heterogeneous.